read your book last week and then you kind of wrote an article about helping on nothing. Have you thought of, uh, of trying to work on some, some kind of movement or think tank or uh, that would have a structure in terms of a, a nudging movement when, when the time comes? Maybe even working with the with the people who are who are doing this uh, libertarian uh, paternalism here in terms of having some kind of, of, of program. Coming up with ideas, I think ideas would be the first place. As a, as a, even, I, I see it as a, as a social or academic movement, mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe even with the people who are doing this work, to have um, answers for, for these politicians. Well, I, I don't think they know much about the nudging. No, they, they, they don't. And again, it's, this is what is uh, unusual about this book. I'm sort of applying some, some sciences in there. No, but... Uh, are there any of my students left here? I know we had a couple of my students earlier. I want to tell them about the final exam. Okay, there's one here. <laughs> I'm teaching a class uh, uh, at the university right now, and the title of the course is Cuba, Past, Present, and Future. The final exam is going to be something along the lines of encouraging the students to come up with ways of nudging. Give me ideas. How would you nudge? Given what you've learned, how would you apply it? In, in my book, I cite a couple of examples. I cite some about economics and political science and so on and so forth. Let them think. I, I want to get the students to come up with some ideas of, of nudging. And, and again, you know, parliamentary system could be, could be uh, monetizing the economy. I talk in the book about, uh, and again, for different reasons, about a taxation system. What would be the taxation system in a perfect world that a post-Castro government would have? What we find in Latin America is that, first of all, nobody pays income taxes. This idea of, you know, come April 15th, running to the post office to mail our check to the government, that is purely North America. That, we don't do that stuff. <laughs> no, the, the, you know, there's the old, the old, the old joke that, uh, uh, you know, the new tax is, is passed and, uh, and the American doesn't sleep that night. He's thinking all night long, you know, what am I going to do to pay this new tax? I got to get another job. I got to work overtime. What am I going to do? you know, calling expenses. The Cuban also stays awake all night trying to figure out how not to pay the tax. What can I do not to have to pay the tax? So um, thinking in, ta in taxation, uh, I would argue that a uh, sales tax, for example, would be ideal. Again, not because of the merits in, 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 in economic merits. We can argue that forever. Because if you have a sales tax, the, that population will begin to see immediately what my government is costing me. If that sales tax is, you know, 15% or 20%, I'm beginning to see it's costing me so much. It's not obscure, it's not paid by the import duties or some other obscure mechanism that I never feel it. I'm paying it every time I make a purchase. Am I getting good government for my money? Yes or no? So those would be ideal ideas that I hope will be generated from, from this. Well, uh, yes, in fact, we do a lot at the University of Miami. We interview a lot of people coming out. In fact, in the book, I do cite some yeah. surveys. But I have to caution you that it's a different environment. You're taking someone from Cuba, yeah. putting them into an environment that is already functioning as a democracy okay. as opposed to being there. So I don't know that that would truly but help it's still us. still interesting. Do, do you it, have any idea it, Well, not, not, in, not in, in, in terms per se, it does take a while. I, I can tell you from personal experience that um, we understand the economics first, we sort of figure out how to make a living first, yes. but how to truly participate in the government yes. and those things, it, ta it takes a while. Um, I, I would, and, I, and I think I talk about this in the book, the idea of tolerance 
you know, Cubans are not, we don't make a distinction. You guys make a distinction, Americans, between an adversary yeah. and an enemy. You understand that an adversary is not necessarily an enemy. We don't understand that. In a North American campaign, political campaign, people will scream at each other, will insult each other, the campaign is over, you kiss and make up, and it's all over. In Latin America, you have a political campaign. Four generations later, you're going to be saying, you told my great-grandfather in the year, whatever, that, you know. We don't, we don't understand that. We make enemies when they're adversaries. So the political side takes a lot longer to, to develop and, and, and to assimilate. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how, how, how we can how we could nudge that as well. So have to think about that. Sir. Uh, given that we are how we are, mm -hmm. as you say in that chapter, um, once the Castros pass away and the other two gentlemen that you mentioned pass away also, as well as the, the example you cited right now that we carry four generations later uh, a grudge of what my great grandfather said, mm -hmm. where are the leaders going to come from Miami? Or well, there's a big ego in between. You know, there is a there is a whole chapter in the book in the Eastern European countries. There is this process of cleaning up. What do you do? What do you do? Lech Walesa was uh, asked one time because he started changing everybody in the government. In, in, uh, at the, and his answer was, I prefer temporary inexperience to permanent obstructionism. Okay? So one argument is you clean house. Okay? The flip side of that, we tried that in Iraq with the Ba'ath Party. It was a disaster for us in Iraq. It's because you, you cannot dismantle the entire operating structure. Um, the Eastern Europeans came up with the, I guess they invented the term lustration, word for the day. Uh, I guess it comes from the Latin to lustrate, to clean. So the whole process of lustration, what do you do with all those government officials that we have, uh, that we're going to find there? Um, and, and there's a whole literature, by the way, on this lustration thing. My approach is, is twofold. Democracy requires heroic tolerance, truly heroic tolerance. Uh, we're going to have to forgive a lot. We're going to forget a lot. I take my guidance on this from uh, the Cuban political prisoners, I, I, ex-political prisoners I have met with, any number of them. I don't know if Pedro is here. No, he's not. Um, and I sort of try to get their guys. These are the people that, you know, spent 16, 20, 30 years in Cuban jails. and. Their approach is twofold. You have to have justice, yes, but you also have to forgive and, and at some point. So there's going to have to be a tremendous amount of, of, of both. Uh, and we're not very good at this. We're really not very good at this. Uh, another chapter in the book is No le, pida, no le pidas peras al olmo. Don't ask pearls of the elm tree. We, we, you know, we're going to have to learn how to tolerate a lot. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is. What we do not want to see is a bloodbath, obviously. Uh, I wrote an article that hasn't been published now, which is, uh, uh, I'm looking to, to uh, clean it up, uh, El Manual de la Perfecta Transición Cubana, the Manual of the Perfect Cuban Transition. Uh, <laughs> uh, I took the title from Carlos Alberto's uh, work as well. Um, and the perfect transition is one that proceeds from law to law, like the Spanish transition, from law to law, de ley a ley. Yeah, it, it would probably be fiction in the case of Cuba, mm -hmm. I think. I Mickey. Think, I think something that's interesting, for lack of a better word, that's interesting is, uh, and, and she kind of was, I think, maybe, or made me think about this, is that you know, it's, it's easier for Cubans in the near or distant future to deal with changing, uh, you know, and adapting to democracy, it's easier to adapt to democracy outside of Cuba than to, to sure. within Cuba. You know, going through the troubles of building a democracy where you can, you know, in 90 miles, you can just be at a democracy already. You know, well, I'm about to explain myself. No, 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 it, it is, and and uh, I think.